let's take a closer look at natural crotch rigging just so that we can learn to recognize some of the pitfalls or the things that we could do in, in setting it up that might cause a piece to go in the wrong direction or spin around and possibly hit, hit us, the climber in the tree. Okay, we've started with a, with a half hitch here, down below our cut, and then we've added a half hitch, and that helps to share the load together with what I've got here is a clove hitch and two halves. Okay, Rip's gonna be using a running bowl and above, I believe, but the point here is that the standing part, and in this case, the fall of the rigging line, needs to be kept back against the stem in such a way that when the piece being cut breaks over, that it can't swing through. That's gonna hold it in place, okay? Now, because the line is run over the top, when we slack off, it's allowed to run. We don't wanna get ourselves in a situation where after cutting the piece, it swings down on top of the fall. That can pinch the line and cause the piece to be stuck and we can't get it down, okay? If we were to have the line running out away from the stem or off of the half hitch, so to speak, then when the piece was to come over, it could swing through and now it's loose to swing wildly, okay? So pay close attention. Take a good look at the half hitch and see how it can swing and that it cannot swing through the fall of the rigging line. Another and slightly different scenario or situation that a person might choose to uh, use natural crotch rigging for trunk wood or a top where we have a side branch. We would form the half hitch in the crotch and then again we have our half hitch and a running bowl in this time. Depending on which way I pass around the main stem, and I only have two choices, one way might cause trouble for me in lowering the piece down afterward and or possibly it swinging wildly out of control. The other way might be a much better choice, but we really have to take the time to look and think it through. Here, where I've actually passed the line first up and through the crotch and then around the stem and then under to form my half hitch, and then up to form my half hitch and running bowling. What happens if I stand over in this direction or if the, the rigging line is run, perhaps back around the tree with tree wraps or what have you, is the top then comes over and the line can bind itself so that now even when letting free uh, of the line from down below, it's still bound under the weight of the piece. So then what happens if we stand or if we wrap this way? If we wrap this way, then the piece will come off and nothing is there to keep it from swinging back except for the rope and the tension against the stem. If it can get itself behind that line, then it can swing right back to where the climber is. So then one might say, let's take it the other way. If we take our half hitch the other way around the stem, and then we can stand back in this direction. We have to look to see how the piece will hang after it's been cut. As it swings down now, it doesn't bind because it's underneath of the fall line running back down to the trunk wraps or the porter wrap. So it's free to run when we ease off on the line. And it doesn't want to go any further than the crotch because the crotch is gonna stop it from going any further. And of course, we never want to rig from the same crotch we're tied into. The rigging line could run across the climbing line if we were to do that. And in doing so, it could significantly damage or even burn through our climbing line. So it pays to take a good close look at what's going to happen after the piece is cut, where it's gonna end up, how it's gonna hang, and how the ropes are gonna be run.